The next objective is uh, gestational trophoblastic disease, or GTD, and also known as gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. And one thing to remember is that when you have a molar pregnancy, which is usually self-limited, we call it GTD. When the mole comes back as an invasive mole or turns into choriocarcinoma, we call that malignant GTD or GTN. So GTN implies on the boards that you have something that you're going to need to treat. So here's a typical question. A 13-year-old is brought in by a mother because she's pregnant. She has a 20-centimeter mass, a serum HCG of 50,000. There's no heart tones, and she's 12 weeks from her last period. Her ultrasound shows a snowstorm appearance. What's your diagnosis? And here's a picture they would accompany it with. <coughs> and this is a typical complete mole. You see the, the villi, the swollen villi. You don't see any fetal parts. And the most obvious diagnosis for this would be a complete hydatidiform mole. There's two types, remember. There's a complete and a partial. The karyotypes are different. The complete mole is 46XX. The partial mole is 69, either XXY or XYY. The way that you get a complete mole is you duplicate a 23X sperm, which, I'm sorry, you duplicate the 23X genotype in a blighted ovum from a 23X sperm, and that is known as daddy's girl. So you get an empty egg, it's fertilized by a 23X sperm, it duplicates, and you get 46XX. The most common way of a partial mole being formed is fertilization by an egg by two sperm. The complete mole has a higher HCG, a bigger uterus, no fetus. The partial mole is swollen, hydropic, and the recurrence rate is dramatically different, 15% versus probably less than 1%. There's a classic board presentation that if somebody shows up on the boards with uh, preeclampsia in the second trimester, it's going to be a partial mole. So if you were presented with one of these, what would you do? Number one, make sure it's not an IUP. So you would want an ultrasound to make sure there were no fetal parts. You already look for a metastatic disease because patients can present with METs and the most common place you find them is either in the vagina or on a chest x-ray. Because they have a high HCG, they can present with hyperthyroidism. You do a suction DNC or a suction dilation and extraction depending on the size of the uterus. You put them on birth control, and they used to say that birth control was contraindicated, but it's not. You follow their HCG down to zero. They're supposed to wait six months, and now what happens is they have a tenfold increase in the chance of getting a second mole. So they go from about 1 in 1,200 to 1 in 100, and if it's happened twice, 1 in 10. And there are patients who have had multiple moles. Now, this patient comes back six months later. Her HCG, after evacuation, her HCG went down to 1,000. Now it's back up to 14,000, and it's climbing. She also has bilateral adnexal masses, which sounds suspicious for METs. She has a myometrial mass, and her chest x-ray shows lung METs. She wants to maintain her fertility. Unfortunately, she is sent for surgery, and this is the next picture they show you. And what you're seeing here is a TAH-BSO specimen. Over here, you see what are called thecaludian cysts. These are large, symmetric, septated cysts that are associated with a high HCG level, and they can happen even with a normal pregnancy. And you're seeing a uterus with a big mass in it here, which is probably choriocarcinoma or an invasive mole. And this is a patient who probably did not, in this scenario, this patient didn't need either. She needed chemotherapy. So to get from GTD to GTN, or also known as malignant GTD, you need to have either a mole that comes back, and we call that a persistent mole or an invasive mole because it invades the myometrium, or choriocarcinoma. If it turns into choreo, the most common spot of metastases are the va vagina and the lungs. You don't need a biopsy to make a diagnosis because a lot of these patients, the biopsies are dangerous. The patients bleed too much. So if you have somebody who's had a pregnancy, 
their HCG is going up, and they have a lung mass, you can make the diagnosis of choriocarcinoma based mm -hmm. on the lung mass and the rising HCG and treat it from there. You do not have to biopsy it. Even though a lot of patients will wind up getting some type of surgery or radiation therapy, they always talk about chemotherapy being the mainstay of treatment for GTN and the most important drug to remember for this is methotrexate. If you're talking about multi-agent chemotherapy, it may be the Emico regimen, which uh, we'll talk about in a minute, but methotrexate is the standard drug used. How often does this happen? It happens about 15% of the time for a complete mole, about 1% for a partial mole. The way you diagnose it is the HCG will drop down and then start going back up again. You need to make sure it's not a new pregnancy Remember that you cannot rule that out until you get past a quant of 1,500. You do an exam, you check the patient for metastatic disease, and remember it can present as choriocarcinoma, which can be rapidly metastatic. It can present with lung mets, liver mets, brain mets, and again, a biopsy is not needed, and now that it has come back, you call it malignant GTD or GTN. And again, chemotherapy is the main treatment, Methotrexate is the most important drug. If you have brain mets, you can do radiation. Liver mets, you can do radiation. The problem is that brain radiation can cause what's called cortical blindness, and liver radiation can cause cirrhosis. And there are patients who have been cured, but they have uh, long-standing complications from this. A lot of people will eventually need uh, surgery. The most common surgery done is a hysterectomy for persistent disease that becomes resistant. And the cure rates really are nothing less than amazing. Patients with brain mets can have an extremely high cure rate, over 50%. And probably the most important thing is that if you recognize this, and it happens about 1 out of 20,000 pregnancies, so it, it may be seen. If you recognize this, these patients should go to a tertiary center where there is a G1 oncologist who specializes in this or an oncologist who specializes in this. Now, there's always something that... Uh, there's always an exception to the rule. And for this topic, it's the PSTT. Remember from embryology that the cytotrophoblast becomes an intermediate cell, which becomes a syncytiotrophoblast. That's a typo there. That should be syncytio. The syncytiotrophoblast makes HCG. The intermediate cell makes HPL. If this intermediate cell becomes neoplastic or malignant, it's called a placental site trophoblastic tumor. These patients are usually really hard to diagnose, and they very often have had multiple DNCs after either a miscarriage or a delivery, and they're diagnosed as having endometritis, and finally somebody does the stain for HPL or recognizes a cell type, and unfortunately, the recommended treatment is not chemotherapy, it's a hysterectomy. So this is a form of GTN which is usually locally invasive. However, if it does metastasize, the prognosis is really poor. And that's it for this one.